You had this sudden event. You were stunned beyond belief. You can't think rationally. You can't even feel appropriately. For me, it was an afternoon in Wyoming. I was visiting, and Jesse came and said, I need help. I've had thoughts of killing myself, and I can't deal with it. I'm tired. She said, I'm tired. I can't deal with it anymore. I think it's something that I probably just dealt with my whole life. When the subject of family comes up, we go out of our way to tell people that we have a schizophrenic daughter, and I think that's critically important if we're going to deal with this for it to come out in the open. If you had a child who had cancer, you would have all kinds of support. When you have a child who has a mental illness, nobody knows how to deal with it. Nobody knows how to relate to you. Nobody knows what to say to you. And it's so important for all of us who have this in the family to talk about it, just as you would any other disease that had a genetic component. There's a great belief that if we join forces, we will be much stronger. This is what IMRO is all about, joining forces, where we can create a force that cannot be stopped. IMRO actually takes more risks and funding than, than the, for example, government is able to, and in that risk, they, they back these cutting-edge researchers who then do the work that gets the attention of the people who are able to then keep on funding them with government money. So it's, it's an, a hugely important step in research. What we know about the brain now, the pace of the development, and uh, all it takes is money, because they've got the tools now, they have the science, they've got a roadmap now, the genome's given them the pathology. So we just need time and more people doing it, and we'll get these things cured in our lifetime. <laughs>